If you don't get comfortable with sales, if you don't take responsibility for it, one year, two years, three years from now, you will not see any growth. You'll have trouble putting food on the table and you're gonna wonder why the hell you're even doing this. You may think that you suck at sales and you're dreaming and wishing and hoping that someone is gonna come in and save you. You're gonna hire this person, they're gonna come in and save you, do all of your selling for you, all of your marketing for you, all of your branding for you. But the truth is that no one will be able to sell as well in your business as you will. Selling is a skill set. It's a technique. It's something that you can learn and hone over time with practice. What selling is not is a natural, innate ability. And I know this because you can take someone who's introverted, who's quiet, who's shy, and they can become an amazing salesperson. You can take someone who's outgoing and uh, loves to talk to people and loves to connect, and they will sell nothing if they're inauthentic, if they're fake, if they don't help people out. Because that's really the key. All sales is, is helping connect people to what they need to overcome their challenge. I'm someone who needs and wants something. You are going to help me get that. I am going to pay you for that. You've just sold me something. That's it. What selling is not is convincing people to do something that they don't want to do or talking someone into something that goes against what's in their best interest. All selling is is helping people get what they need or get what they want. And once you get comfortable understanding that that's all a salesperson is, that's all business development is, that's all being a leader within your company is, helping people get what they need or want and being able to be fairly compensated for it, then it starts to free up the feeling of I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a used car salesperson. I'm not good at twisting people's arms. I'm not convincing them. You may think that people have this natural born innate ability. But let me tell you, when I started my company, I was 23 years old and I spent six months explaining to people what we did. And what I realized after six months was no one understood what the hell I was talking about. I would talk about how we do strategy and how we would shoot videos and we'd help with communications. We help with all this stuff. And literally people would be like, what are you talking about? And so I hired a coach. I heard a business coach who helped me understand, oh, when I speak to different people, I need to shift what I say based off of what they're looking for. Oh, uh, I need to ask them what it is they want to accomplish. I can't just launch into this speech about trying to sell them a service that, that I don't even know if it applies or not. I can't assume that everyone is super cheap and jump into pricing right away. Like there are certain strategies that you can naturally learn. But then the other thing I had to do was go out and talk to people. And I've been doing this now for 12 years. So year after year after year, the more people I speak to, you know, at this point I'm speaking to hundreds of people a year. And you start to get into the natural rhythm and you start to figure out that there's only six or eight or 10 or 12 questions people ask. They all have the same questions. It all leads to the same four, five, six, seven responses. And those responses lead to the same outcomes. And you start to get good at it. If you want to sit down and learn the guitar, you are going to have to learn the, uh, what, the chord structures. You're going to have to learn to read tabs or sheet music, which is a totally different language. You're going to have to have the muscle memory of making sure that you can play a certain way. You need to learn the beat. You need to learn all of these things to be able to play the guitar really effectively. And when you are in sales, you have to learn these things and practice these things so they come second nature to you and you can do it really effectively. But here's the thing. You may think that you're bad at sales. You may be bad at sales. You may be terrible at sales right now, but no one will sell as effectively in your business as you. This is your business. You're one of the founders or the founder. You're the owner. You're the person with the vision. On the spot, you can decide what things should cost and how much they should cost. You can decide whether you are moving forward with it because you want to get an example piece or some sales or not. Here's an example. One of my team members came to me and he said, hey, we have this opportunity, Mark, and this client wants to do this thing, but I just can't make the pricing work. I just, I, I've gone through all the pricing models and I can't make it work. Of course, I gave him pricing models. I gave him structure. He can't make this deal happen. I said, well, why don't we make them guarantee 16 projects over the course of a year and then I'll give them a 20% discount on all projects. And now the pricing works. I could do that. I mean, I, it would have been great if he came to me and he said, hey, Mark, I can't make this deal work, but what if we gave him 16? <laughs> what if we had them guarantee 16 projects over a year and we gave him a 20% discount and now the pricing works, right? It's just this thinking, but I can do that because here's what I want, right? I want the, whatever it is, $80,000 revenue. I want the $100,000 revenue, $120,000 revenue. Am I willing to discount at 20% if they guarantee that revenue? Yeah. 
I'm willing to discount at 20%. When I'm sitting in front of someone and I know all areas of my business, I know what parts can be squeezed and what parts can be given away just to make the deal work and what parts we're not so good at and what parts we're gonna crush and be amazing at, I can make really big, bold promises. When I'm speaking to someone and I'm trying to help them out, right? all sales is, is helping people, when I'm trying to help them out, get what they need or what they want, I can make really big, bold promises because what I can then do is go back to my team as the owner of the company and say, guys, I made this promise. What are we gonna do to fulfill this? Right? I promised them this stuff. And my team can say, why the heck did you promise that? And then I can say, well, I wanted to help them out. I wanted to get a deal. I wanted to get the revenue. I wanted to be, have the opportunity. I wanted to put the project together. I wanted to put the deal together. Right? I own the company. If one of my team members came to me and they said, hey, I made this really big promise. What the heck? What? Why did you make that big promise? How are we gonna do that? I'm gonna freak out on them. And I shouldn't. But, and then we'll get over it and then I'll be really proud of them and happy with them. But in the room, in the room, get the deal done in the room, I can make the promise. I can change my pricing model. I can give something away. I can be the owner of the business. They know they're speaking to the owner of the business and I can say, I'm the final authority on this. I am so ingrained and in touch with what it is other clients are looking for that I can tell these people, hey, this is what they're looking for and this is how we've applied it and this is how we can apply it to you. And so you can bring on a salesperson and maybe your salesperson can start to grow and expand in this way. But unless they're at like a partner level in mindset, unless they have total freedom, unless they're comfortable changing not only operations and not only team structure and not only HR, but also pricing and other things, they're not gonna have the freedom that I have. They're not gonna have the freedom that you have to say, hey, to make this deal work, I'm willing to do this, I'm willing to do this, I'm willing to trade that. Oh, I am not willing to do this at all. Because that's the other thing you run into with a salesperson. They'll bring, they'll, they'll, they could promise the world and you might not be willing to do those things. They could cut all kinds of deals and be wheelers of dealers and it might erode your profitability. It may not be right for your business, but it's right for them to get the sale, to get the commission. I'm not saying everyone has those kind of motivations, but when you are the owner of the business and you figure out how to sell, no one will be able to compete with you. You will absolutely crush it and destroy everyone else in the company because you have the vision, you have the connection, you have the power, you know the entire organization, and you can make huge promises. How can you not sell if you have all of those things? So what do you do? Right? You don't think you can sell. I think you can sell. I think anyone can sell. They just have to sell in their own way. And that's what the first tip is. Find your approach, find your voice. Don't try to sell like others. Don't try to sell like me. Sell the way that you need to sell. Be really open and honest with people. I don't negotiate anything. I don't like negotiating. I ask people what their budget is and then I try to work within their budget. Someone else will say, you're leaving money on the table. I'm fine leaving money on the table. I'm not trying to get a lot of money out of people. I'm trying to help them. I don't like negotiating. Maybe you love negotiating. Maybe you love fighting for every last dollar. Maybe you believe that you need it. Cool, that's your selling way. Maybe you're not comfortable asking penetrating questions with people, or really digging into stuff. So maybe you have a questionnaire. Maybe you send them the questionnaire in advance and they work through it. So you never have to talk to them. They send it back to you and they go, wow, those were really great questions. It really got me thinking. And you go, thanks. And then you read that questionnaire. And then maybe you hand it to someone else on your team. Like, like your structure for sales should be 100% dependent on what it is you need to do to be able to help someone out, be able to arrive at whatever their solution is or whatever you're gonna do for them, be able to put some kind of structure for what it will cost, uh, some kind of plan, and then hand that to them and get them to buy into it. That's all the sales process is. If you're working in retail, if it's your store, who is gonna be more passionate than you, right? If you like to hide in the back, you wanna have other people forward, cool, you can do that. But then it's about getting on the floor. It's about speaking to the customers. The more you speak with the customers, the more you can understand what they're buying for. The more inf it actually impacts your buying decisions if you are also the person buying for your store. And then it also impacts, hey, people keep asking to find this one thing. Maybe your wayfinding is terrible. Maybe your store setup is terrible. Like you start to learn all of these things. It will increase sales the more time you spend there. Let's say that you're a manufacturer and you're not even responsible for selling things directly to the end client because you sell through a distribution channel. This is a pretty common setup. Your sale is getting your distributors to not only take your product, but actually push and sell your products. So you need to be able to spend more time building relationships with the distributors to ensure that they're displaying your products, pushing your products, selling your products. Or maybe you're gonna do a workaround and go to a direct to consumer model as well and start to do factory direct or wholesale direct or whatever it is. 
Your job is to focus on sales and who is gonna put the deal better together than you. That's really what it comes down to. You might be scared, you might be nervous, you might think you suck in front of people and that might be true. You can be scared, you can be nervous, you can suck in front of people. But you have to be able to put in the time, you have to be able to build the structure that allows you to arrive at the deal and you have to be able to practice it so you can get better at it. And this should be obvious because here's what we see with entrepreneurs. You founded the company, you started the company, you are the leader of the company. No one should be more passionate, no one should be more connected to the vibrance of what's happening than you. If you look around and you find that other people are more passionate, more connected to what you're doing, then you, you, you have a problem, like you have a serious problem. This is not a sales problem. This is a passion, this is a purpose, this is a vision, this is a leadership problem. If the person answering your phones is so much more passionate than you are about what you're doing for your customers, for your clients, solving big problems, building things, whatever it is, then you have a real problem and has nothing to do with sales. But if you don't have that problem, if you are the most passionate, if you are the most connected, if you are the most future thinking person in the organization, which you should be, no one should be able to outsell you. So if you're still with me at this point, if you're shouting at the video, amen, Mark, preach it, brother, then you need to develop your skill sets. You need to be able to work on them. You need to be able to hone them. Become the person who wants to learn guitar and the muscle memory and the practice and the reading sheet music in the different language. Immerse yourself in this. Put yourself out there. Put yourself in front of people. Have the conversations. Be willing to be judged. Be willing to suck at it. Be willing to get the crap kicked out of you because after a few months, you will be better. After a few years, you will be extraordinary. I was not a good salesperson and I think I've become a pretty darn good salesperson. I want you to have the same success. And to do that, you have to remember to think big, you have to be bold, and then you have to say yes. You may suck at sales. Chances are, you probably do. <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> if growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.